guys, this is Lauren with Lauren Watkins Art, and today I'm going to be doing an art chat with you as I paint this seascape. So I wanted to talk to you guys about goal setting and some of the goals that I'm setting for this year. I love setting goals and working towards them, whether they're considered New Year's resolutions or they're just the plain old goals. Um, it's something I need to do for myself so that I feel like I'm moving in a direction that I'm happy with so that I feel like I'm living an intentional life. Now, I, I didn't really have a word for it when I started doing this of, I want to live intentionally, so I'm going to set goals. It was just something that I really wanted to like work towards something. And when I started working towards something, I felt happier and I felt like I was moving in a direction that made me happy. Um, so I just love goal setting. And the only reason why I'm working as an artist is because I made it a goal in 2016 to paint more because I felt like art was missing from my life. And as I started painting more consistently and working at improving my skills, um, the I started getting clientele from people that wanted to buy my work and the only reason why I have a YouTube channel is because in 2018 I believe end of 2017 I decided I wanted to share some of the things I've learned about art with others and so I started a YouTube channel and I've been working on growing that channel ever since so a lot of really good things. There's a lot of other things that have come from my life because I've been working towards something intentionally. Now, don't get it mistaken that I've set these goals and everything's been hunky-dory the whole time I've been working towards them. Working towards goals in my life has not been a linear process where I set a goal and and everything goes great until I achieve that goal. It's an up and down process and there's setbacks along the way. And sometimes it feels like as soon as I set a goal, the, the universe starts like working towards making it impossible for me to achieve that goal. Um, I remember one year I set a goal to save more money because I wanted to save it for this one thing I was working towards. And as soon as I set that goal, then the car broke down and then the furnace died and all these different things happened that made it really hard to save money because they were all things that had to be fixed or replaced. And I know that can get really discouraging because it, there's all those setbacks that make it hard to achieve the goals that we want to work towards. So last year in my art chat video, I talked about the importance of having an attitude of perseverance where even though you have a setback or you fall off the bandwagon or whatever it is that you don't dwell on that and you get up and you try again. So if you have a, a goal to lose weight, whatever that goal is, if you have a bad day where you don't eat a great diet or you don't exercise as much or as hard as you wanted to, the important thing is, is to not dwell on that, but to learn from it and just say, you know what, I'm going to do better tomorrow. And you try and you get back up and you try again the next day and you try again the next day. Or if you've had a bad week or a month or even a bad half of the year, it, the important thing is to get back up and try again. And that persevering is going to make all the difference. So this year, I wanted to talk about the, the importance of honest reflection in the goal setting process. This is when you look back and analyze what you did and how you felt, um, how it went, um, what the situation was surrounding it just looking back and trying to understand what happened. And this can be over a course of a day. So at the end of the day, when you kind of look back at how the day went or over a week or a month, 
for the year if you're trying to look back at the whole year and understand how your goals went that year. This isn't so that we can be mean or harsh to ourselves or feel bad. This is so that we can kind of get it, we can check in and understand what happened and why. And when we can understand what happened and why, we can know what we need to do in the future to prevent it from happening again. Or if it went really well, we can know what we need to to keep doing to keep us on the path of progress. And sometimes self-reflection causes us to reevaluate our goals and adjust them so that they're more realistic. Sometimes it's because our goals change, our priorities change um, partway through the year and we need to focus on something else. Um, For me in 2020, I had set a goal to post a YouTube video every other week at least. That was my minimum. And mid-March, all of a sudden I was homeschooling my kids for six hours a day doing their homework with them and they were home all day with me and it became a lot harder to film videos because there was people walking around my house all the time and they couldn't go anywhere and I was feeling stressed and overwhelmed trying to do both and I was not being the patient loving mom that I I want to be and that I try to be. And so when I was checking in on myself and realizing that I was being a lot more frustrated and short-tempered that I needed to kind of reprioritize what was going on. And so I, I realized that I had a lot more stress and the circumstances in which I had set my goals had kind of changed. And so I needed to reevaluate my goals. And so instead of posting a video every other week as a minimum, I decided to kind of put my YouTube channel to the side for a bit and focus on doing school work with my kids and teaching them and finishing up the commissions I had already lined up for the year. And when I did that, I felt a lot more at peace. I was happy with what I was working towards and I was doing better in all those aspects in my personal life and my professional life. And then we did the whole chaotic thing of packing up and moving during a pandemic and getting situated and, and starting a new life in a new state. And once we'd gotten situated again and everything started to normalize again um, in the beginning of fall, I started reflecting again on my goals and and how I was feeling and I realized that some of those goals that I had set aside at the beginning of the year because of the pandemic I could start working towards towards them again because my life circumstances had changed again and so one of those goals was starting to post YouTube videos again and I started posting them again and some weeks I'd have two videos other weeks it would just be one but I got more consistent with posting again and got back in the swing of things and I ended up ending the year with 20 videos instead of 26 videos and I was really proud of myself when I was counting up how many videos I'd posted because of everything that had gone on and going months and months and months without posting anything to get that close to that goal was really reassuring to me. It was also a great reminder that sometimes we can set goals for ourselves and then circumstances change and we have to reevaluate, but we don't have to give up on those goals indefinitely. We can come back to them and we can work towards them again. And I think that's part of why I'm such an advocate of self-reflection as part of the goal setting journey is that we're checking in on ourselves. We're seeing is this goal actually serving me? Is it, is what I'm working towards making me happy? Or am I just working towards this goal because I felt 
pressure to to choose it. So a lot of people try to lose weight at the beginning of the year. Well, did you choose to lose 10 pounds this year because you wanted to be healthier and you wanted to feel good and be able to do tasks around your house or sports that you like doing easier? Or did you choose it because everyone else was trying to lose weight at the new year? Reflection might also help you understand that the way you're trying to achieve a goal might not be the best way for you. So let's apply this concept to art. So say you set a goal that you want to draw more often and you decide that you're going to draw after work in the evenings and you start off strong doing that. But then as the months wear on, you stop uh, drawing as much in the evenings and it kind of tapers off. Well, with self-reflection, you ask yourself, okay, why have I not been painting in the evenings? And you find out, oh, you know, my evenings are really busy. By the time I get home from, from work, I've got to cook dinner and get the kids homework done with them and get them to bed. And so there's not very much time to paint before I'm tired and ready to go to bed. So you you can kind of reflect on the things that are causing you not to stick to your goal. And then you can reevaluate. So maybe you feel more creative in the mornings. Maybe you're actually a morning person. And so you decide that you're going to wake up an hour earlier in the mornings before you work to draw. And what you do in the evenings is set everything up so that when you wake up, you can just get started. So that is why I'm such a big proponent of adding self-reflection in my goal setting and goal maintaining process. And I hope that you're able to add it to your process as you set and work towards your goals. And remember to make your goals something that you genuinely want, not because you feel pressured to make it as your goal, and to make the process something realistic for you to achieve. So what are my goals for this upcoming year? Well, one of my goals is to experiment with my style. I feel like I've been in a little bit of a rut for the last year and a half, two years-ish, that I haven't really pushed myself outside my comfort zone. Sometimes I look at my my paintings of when I first started art and I experimented and tried all different kinds of styles of painting and drawing and I was really creative. And I feel like the last year and a half I've been more of a safe zone just working on commissions and getting those projects hammered out and not playing as much. And so this year I'm going to try and limit my commissions a little bit so that I'm not feeling this overwhelming pressure to just work on those all the time and have a little bit more time to play and experiment and try different styles I'm going to try and look at other artists' work and just see what they do and see if I can try some of the techniques they use and see if those are something I like. Um, I want to play with color palettes and, and try to limit color palettes and try to use different kinds of colors than what I typically work in. Another thing I want to work towards is... I want to do a series of paintings that are related to each other. I did this a lot when I first started working full-time as an artist. I did a Yellowstone series where I painted colorful animal portraits um, based off of animals found in Yellowstone National Park. And I did an Ocean Wave series where I painted a bunch of ocean waves. And I would like to do some more series, whether I go back to painting oceans but do them a little bit differently or uh, some of the other ideas I have for subject matter, I want to start working on a project like that that's kind of cohesive and there's multiple pieces related to it and explore that subject matter more. So that's one of my goals. I want to release two series this year and have about four to five paintings in the series. So my next goal is one related to something I started last fall. So last fall, I started teaching watercolor courses at my local university for their community outreach program. And I'm going to be teaching two more classes this spring with them. And 
last fall I released some short videos that did kind of an overview of what we painted in those classes but this spring I want to release videos related to what we painted in those classes but have them be longer format videos so instead of like a 20 minute video for a three hour painting have it be like an hour hour and a half and go a little bit more in depth of what we painted the steps we took show the color mixing on the screen and really allow the the student to follow along where they can pause the video and paint what I painted and then move on so that's one of my goals we'll see how that one goes doing a little bit longer format because it gets a little tricky trying to record and edit something that massive but I want to improve my video and editing skills and I think this will be a good push to start that process so those are my three main goals related to art this year I hope you enjoyed listening about them and my TED talk about setting goals and the importance of using reflection in your goal setting process if you did, please hit the like button. And if you want to see more of what I create and follow along with me this coming year, please hit the subscribe button and click on the notifi notification bell so that you can find out when I post a new video. Have a fantastic year and have a fantastic week. Bye. <music>